Welcome back to the show. UFC 181 goes down on December 6th at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, Nevada. And what a stellar card. The UFC welterweight championship of the world is on the line as Johnny Hendricks returns to action to take on ruthless Robbie Lawler in a rematch as well. The lightweight championship also on the line as former WEC champion, current UFC lightweight champion, and perhaps one of the pound for pound best in the world. If you, you know, when you take into consideration skill, takes on one of the best meat and potatoes fighters in the world in El Nino, Gilbert Melendez. But we're going to talk about the welterweight championship fight first. Robbie Lawler, it will be the fourth time that he's competed in 2014 for Johnny Hendricks. It'll be the first time he's fought since he faced Robbie Lawler earlier this year. Yeah, and I think that's a huge part of this uh, of this story of, of what's going to happen in this fight. You look at it, and in that fight, Hendricks won the fight. And it was a great one. And he won it in round five, which is when he arguably lost the George St. Pierre fight. Going into round five, George won round one and I believe round three. But you don't know that. You don't know who won what round. You got to go into five and you got to take it. You got to own it. And uh, Hendricks did not do that against George. And he ended up on the wrong side of a decision. And he did do that against Lawler. But the difference is you take your bicep, it disengages, it goes all the way up into your arm, and you spend most of that year getting rehab. The, what you're hoping to do is get back to as good as you were in that last fight. But what have we seen Lawler do since then? Win, 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 and look better, better, better. So even if Hendricks can come back as good as he was, Lawler is better than he was on the last night. And that's an advantage. He's been flowing nicely. He's been performing well. He's mentally good. He's in crazy shape. Robbie Lawler should be the favorite. Well, also, we also have to take into consideration that uh, injury that jo Johnny Hendricks suffered in that fight, has been rehabbing that arm. Will it be the same? Or can he use that as a, 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 a reason for the first fight? You know, maybe I didn't look as good. I'm going to look more dominant in the second fight because I, I wasn't 100%. Yeah, and, and maybe so. And, and what you use as motivation, if it works for you, is good. But, you know, he spent time fixing his body well, his opponent spent time becoming a better fighter, and that, I think, is going to be the big thing in play. But when you look at the two opponents, uh, Jake Ellenberger and Matt Brown, we know Matt Brown mentally super tough. I mean, we've seen the skills from Matt Brown. This guy is a finisher. But Jake Ellenberger, we've seen, this is a guy that isn't always there mentally. You don't always get the best fighter. And when he faces guys that move forward and try to bully him, he kind of fades. So for Robbie Lawler, yes, it's important that he was active in 2014, but against what type of competition in comparison to Johnny Hendricks? But each one of those was another training camp. Each one of those right. had a skill development phase. Each one of those improved his timing and everything. I think he should be the favorite. There's no guarantees, but I think he should be the favorite. The lightweight title fight is a very, very good one. It's a fight that hardcore fans have talked about for many, many years when Pettis was the lightweight champion in the WEC and Melendez was the top guy at Strike Force. Uh, we have a, uh, a scenario where Gilbert Melendez, you know what you're going to get. It's very similar to Dan Henderson, a guy that just hunts after you with his right hand. Gilbert Melendez doesn't really throw a lot of kicks. He'll stand and he'll box, and when the time presents itself, he'll push you up against the cage or try to put you onto the ground. Anthony Pettis, you can never yep. predict what type of attack you're going to get. You know, we know that he's a stand-up guy. He's going to try to knock you out, but he can submit you if the fight goes yeah. down to the ground. Uh, he's a genius. He really is, but so is Gil, man. There's just different kinds of genius. That's why the fight is so perfect. That's why this one is going to be so amazing because when you look at the way their skills work together, they're different fighters, both have ways to win. Look for Melendez to try to look like Frankie Edgar looked this weekend, but that's very hard to do because Anthony is so incredibly mobile. He's never where you want him to be. Coming up, Robin and I discuss the importance of grassroots mixed martial arts and why the regional circuit is essential for the continued success of major organizations from fight rounds on FN.